Hello everyone and welcome to episode 33 of Microsoft Canada's online MTCNA course. This is part 3 of our introduction to firewall and packet flow and in this video we'll first take a look at the fundamental and essential principles of firewall configurations and then talk about the path IP packets take within the packet flow diagram. When we talk about firewall configurations and filters you should know that they work based on three foundational principles. The first is that firewall configurations have an if-then nature. This means that firewall rules work based on a number of ifs and thens, or in other words, conditions and actions. So whenever you're creating a firewall rule, you will determine a set of ifs or conditions that lead to certain thens or actions. When you go to Winbox, from the IP menu and the firewall submenu, you can access the firewall window to create new firewall filter rules. Here you have the General tab. This tab contains several fields that can be used to determine the ifs or conditions. Next, you have the Action tab, which, as the name suggests, allows you to specify the necessary thens or actions that will be taken if the predetermined conditions are met. As an example, from the General and Actions tab, I choose a set of conditions and actions, telling the router that if it receives forwarded traffic that are based on the ICMP protocol, it should record the logs of that activity and use the FICMP prefix to show them. Now, if we start sending ping packets from the trainee router to 8888 that will be forwarded by the class AP, this new firewall rule will give us the log of the forwarded traffic toward 8888, including both the in and out interfaces. And since we have decided to filter all forwarded traffic with the ICMP protocol, we will also see the response coming back from 8888 to the trainee router and its in and out interfaces. To do so, with our firewall filter in place, we can open up the trainee router, go to the ping tool, and start pinging 8888. As the ping starts, you can see the result of the firewall action in the form of a number of log records on the class AP. With a closer look, you can detect the physical in interface and the physical out interface of the ping from 10001 on the trainee router to the address of 8888, and the reverse path used to deliver the response from 8888. Principle number two regarding firewall settings is that they should be smartly engineered with a certain level of specificity. The reason is that since each packet must be checked against all firewall rules, the more rules you create, the higher the CPU usage of your device will be. Therefore, you must always make sure that you're creating the optimum number of rules based on your goals. To observe this principle, you should remember that all firewall filters must be purposeful and simultaneously specific to your needs. For instance, if we open the previous log filter and add a new condition in the form of the WLAN1 to class in interface, this means that the filter will only log the traffic whose in interface is WLAN1 to class. Once we click OK and refer to the log records, you will now only see the records of the traffic whose in interface is WLAN1 to class. That includes only the ping packets being sent from 10001 to 8888. You can always check the CPU usage on the top ribbon of Winbox and aim to keep this figure down to a possible minimum. With this new in interface condition, we have limited our firewall filter to the traffic whose in interface is WLAN 1 to class, and we have thus freed up the router from logging all forwarded traffic going through the class AP. And the third main principle we have is that firewall filters work based on their sequence. This means that the order in which the rules are arranged is very important. When packets reach a device, they will be matched against rules one by one. As a result, you must make sure that your firewall filter rules are not in contradiction with each other, nor do they cancel each other out. For instance, if we create a second rule for forwarded traffic based on the ICMP protocol whose action is to drop the packets using the DICMP prefix for logging, 
Once this rule is created, you can see that the ping starts timing out, which means the packets are being dropped effectively. Now, if you take a look at the log records, you first have the records with the FICMP prefix, which are related to firewall rule number zero. Now, since actions like log or pass through are not actions that kill or reject packets, rule number one can be applied as well. Therefore, as you can see, the log records with the DICMP protocol can also be seen, which are related to rule number one. However, if we reorder our filter rules by dragging and dropping the drop action above the log action, you will see that you no longer have any of the FICMP log results and the log window only shows DICMP entries. That is because unlike log, the drop action is an action that will kill packets. And once the drop action is applied, packets cannot move onto the rules that come after it. Now that we're familiar with the three main principles of firewall filters, let's see the path a forwarded packet takes on the packet flow diagram. Once a packet enters our router from the physical in interface on the physical layer, it will first reach the conditional step that checks for a bridged out interface port. If the answer is yes, it will enter the bridging decision on the data link layer. For bridging configurations in Winbox, you can refer to the bridge menu. However, since we have no bridged interfaces on the class AP, the packet moves on to the next conditional step and asks whether the traffic is an MPLS traffic that uses tags or labels. If the answer is yes, it will enter the MPLS decision on layer 2.5. You can access the MPLS window from the MPLS menu and the submenu with the same title. And finally, the packet reaches the conditional step that asks whether the traffic is based on IPv4 or IPv6. Now, since we're sending ping packets based on source and destination IP addresses, the packet will enter the routing decision operating on the network layer. In case the destination address of the incoming traffic is assigned to the router, the traffic will be an input. However, if the destination address is assigned to a hardware other than the router in question, the traffic will be forwarded traffic, which is the case here with our ping packets from the trainee router to 8888. As a result, the packet is based on the forward chain and takes the path toward the physical out interface of the router, passing three similar conditional stages of MPLS traffic bridged out interface and encapsulation. For our current forwarded ping packets, the answer to all these stages is no, which eventually leads the packet toward the physical out interface so that the packet can exit the class AP and move on toward 8888. Now, this was an overview of the path of a simple forwarded ping packet. However, a lot more activities are taking place in these decision stages. To find out, we can refer to Microtech's reference page on packet flow. As you scroll down, you'll see a few more detailed diagrams that show what happens in each decision stage, including routing. In our upcoming session, we will take a detailed look at the routing flow to talk about the activities that take place for routing a packet. As always, post your questions in the comment section. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to our channel for upcoming tutorials.